Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video, as you will have already seen from the thumbnail, is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a viscose. It's a linen look viscose, so it has this gorgeous weave to it. Very drapey, in quite a fun print. Good for a project like this. And on to the cutting out. This is my back bodice. I have two layers of fabric underneath, a notch to indicate the bottom of my sleeve and a notch to indicate my centre back slit. So the first thing to do here is to stay stitch my armholes. So I'm using a tiny little stitch length here, sewing about a millimetre or two inside my seam allowance. And what this will do is just help to prevent that armhole from stretching out too much while I'm working on putting this dress together. And now that that's done, I'm ready to join my two back pieces together along that center back seam. My fabric is right sides together, and I'm stitching here between that notch you seen me snip earlier and the waist. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance, and back stitching to finish. So now I just need to take care of those raw edges. So I've decided to fell this seam. So to do that, I'm just going to press it open firstly, and then tuck that raw edge in underneath. And press again. So this is just going to give me a nice finish on the centre back seam, but also allow me to finish that slit at the top. And ready to stitch. Starting at the waist with a back stitch, sewing right along that crease edge, using a little bit of a longer stitch length here, and finishing with a back stitch. And of course I've done exactly the same thing on the other side and this is the result. Everything tucked away on the inside and from the outside a nice bit of interest along that centre back. Super happy with this. So now that that's done I'm ready for the sleeves. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. And the first thing to do here is to take care of the hem. So I've chosen double folded hems for this dress. So just folding that raw edge in underneath by about half of my hem allowance, pressing, folding again by the same amount and pressing. And ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, using that same longer stitch length sewing right along that inner crease edge and back stitching to finish. So that's had a good press and now that that's done I'm ready to add this piece to my back. So lining up that bottom edge with the notch you seen me snip earlier. My fabric is right sides together and ready to stitch stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching to finish so I'll take care of that raw edge off camera press that seam flat and this is how it looks so now this piece is ready for my front bodice my fabric underneath is on the fold I have a notch on the waist at the center that same sleeve notch as I had on the back and a couple of notches to mark my dart legs. Popping a pin in at the point of the dart and marking where that pin pierces the fabric with my chalk pen. Now to draw in my dart legs. Pinning firstly the point of the dart 
then making sure my notches are lined up, pinning through the top chalk line, out through the bottom and back up through again. And ready to stitch. Starting at the bottom of the dart legs with a back stitch, following that chalk line the whole way up and pulling my threads to finish. I'll tie those off camera and press out my darts, which you can see here. And I've also ran a line of stay stitching along the armholes, just like I did on the back. And now that that's done, this piece is ready to be joined to my sleeves. So laying it over the top, right sides together, lining up the hem of my sleeve with that notch, and ready to stitch. I finished off that edge and pressed out that seam. And now that that's done, I'm ready for the side seams. Laying the back over the front, right sides together, and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance, and back stitching to finish. Those edges have been finished and pressed. Now that that's done, I'm ready to close up the neckline and armholes. And for this dress, I've decided on a bias finish. So I've cut myself a strip of the outer fabric on the bias. I folded one end in underneath and pressed. And I'm lining that pressed end up with the centre back. And I've done exactly the same thing for the armholes. So now to the machine to stitch, starting with the neckline. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance. Taking this nice and gently, trying to make sure that those edges are lined up the whole way around. And when I get to that center back seam, trimming the excess bias, folding it in underneath and stitching right across the top. Finishing with a back stitch. So the next thing to do here is to trim down that excess seam allowance. So I'm taking off here probably about two thirds. That's how it looks when it's all done. And now to press the bias away from the bodice, but make sure that that trim seam allowance in underneath is butted up against the bias. to the machine to understitch. I've placed my needle about a millimeter or two away from the bodice, stitching through the bias and that trim seam allowance in underneath, using a little bit of a longer stitch length here, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. And what this understitching will do is just to help that bias lie nice and flat and neatly tucked away in underneath. So now to finish the bias off, I just need to take care of that raw edge. So just like I did on the hem of the sleeve before, I'm tucking that raw edge in underneath and pressing into place. ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, sewing right along that inner crease edge using a longer stitch length here, taking this nice and gently the whole way around and finishing with a back stitch. So that just needs a good press, which you can see I've went ahead and done here. Happy with this. So now to do exactly the same thing to the underarms. <laughs> 
once and pressed off camera and under stitching here in exactly the same way as I did the neckline. press that raw edge in underneath and here just running my last line of stitching along that inner crease edge. And once it's had a good press this is how it looks, nice and neat and tidy. So that's as much as I can do on the bodice at this stage, so I'm going to set it aside to work on the skirt. Starting with the overwrap, I have one layer of fabric underneath my pattern piece, a little notch on the side seam that will just help me line up my underwrap later on, a notch on the other side seam indicating where my tie will go. So the first thing to do to this piece is to take care of that top edge. So following the same theme as before, I'm going to double fold, so folding that raw edge in underneath by about half of my allowance, pressing into place, folding again by the same amount and pressing into place. And ready to stitch, sewing right along that inner crease edge. Backstitching to start and backstitching to finish. So that's at a press, and now that that's done, I'm ready for my tie. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. So the first thing to do here is to join those long ends. So folding in half along its length, lining up my edges, my fabric is right sides together and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance. A few little pivots there around that bottom curve and finishing with a back stitch. So I just need to trim down that seam, turn the whole thing right side out and press. So I'm first of all trimming the corner and then folding along the seam allowance and snipping out little triangles. This will just help to give me a nice smooth curve once it's pressed. And now that it is all pressed, it's ready to be added to my skirt. Lining it up with the notch you see me snip earlier and ready to stitch. Sewing here within my seam allowance, back stitching to start and finish. So that's my tie tucked into place and now that that's done I can prep my hem. So just like before I'm double folding the hem here. I'll finish that off camera. All of my raw edges, including my belt, are nicely pressed away in underneath. So now this piece is ready to be added to my under wrap. I have one layer of fabric underneath my pattern piece. And for notches on this piece, I have one at each side seam and one at the centre of the waist. And off camera I've pressed my hem in exactly the same way as I did before. And now that that's done, I'm ready to join my under and over wrap together. So laying my over wrap on top of my under, wrong side of over wrap to right side of under, lining up those notches you see me snip, lining up my edges, and ready to sew. Back stitching to start, 
sewing here about a millimeter or two inside my seam allowance and back stitching to finish. So that's how to press. And now that that's done, I'm ready to add my second tie. So lining that bottom edge up with that notch, pinning into place and stitching here again within my seam allowance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So that's my ties all tacked into place, my front two skirt pieces joined together at the side seam, now on to the back. My fabric underneath is on the fold, I have a notch on the fold line at the waist. I've pressed my hem up there in the same way as I did before. And here just laying my back over my front pieces, lining up my edges and pinning into place. Ready to stitch, back stitching to start at my one centimetre seam allowance and finishing with a back stitch. And of course I do exactly the same to the other side. I've ran those edges through the overlocker and pressed out those seams. So I just have a couple more things to do to finish the skirt. The first of which is to sew down that double folded hem. Starting with the back stitch, sewing right along that crease edge, using that same longer stitch length as I have been using. Taking this nice and gently the whole way round, coming up to my tie, stitching directly over the top. That will just give me a nice and neat finish. So those hems have had a good press and this is the result. Super happy with this and now the last thing I have to do to finish the skirt is just to sew down the edge of that tie. So I've placed my needle as close to that crease edge as I can get, back stitching to start and finish. And that's my tie all secured into place. It's had a good press. And now that that's done, I'm ready to join my bodice and skirt together at that waist seam. So I've pinned my over wrap and my tie pieces out of the way of the waist, popping my hands in through the bodice, picking up the skirt waist and putting it all through to line up with the bodice waist. I've matched up my notches and my side seams and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, using a seam allowance here of about a centimetre and a half as I'm going to use this as my casing for my elastic and back stitching to finish. So I just need to finish that edge on the overlocker and press that seam up towards the bodice, which you can see I've went ahead and done here. And now that that's done, I'm ready to stitch down the edge of those overlock stitches the whole way around the waist, leaving a little gap of about an inch at one side. Coming back round again to my starting point, as I mentioned, back stitching about an inch or so away. So that's my casing all prepped and ready for elastic. I've popped a safety pin on one end and using that to feed the elastic through that little gap. I'll finish that off camera. I've overlapped my ends by about an inch and a half or so. And here, just running a zigzag stitch right over the top of that overlap, going back and forth a couple of times just to make sure it's really secure. 
and then I just have one more thing to do to finish this dress and that's just to close up that little gap running a straight stitch here right over the top so that's that done and with that this little dress is complete I've added a button and a thread loop to that center back neck I've got my sleeves all in place my bias bound armholes and neckline my darts on the front bodice my ties, that gorgeous overlap, and those beautiful double folded hems. And this is how it looks on. I am super happy with how this has turned out. If you've been following over on Instagram, you will have seen the inspiration for this one. Of course, I've made my own changes. So I've lengthened the skirt and I've changed up the bodice a bit but I absolutely love how this looks. It's super comfortable to wear, that elastic waist nips everything in, but isn't constricting. I love the shape of the bodice and those little sleeve pieces, the length of the skirt, the shape of the skirt, the overall fit. I could see this made up in a really dressy sort of satin fabric. I think it would look gorgeous out for dinner but equally this fabric is so nice against the skin nice and casual absolutely love this one so i really hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you found it useful if you did give it a thumbs up if you've not yet subscribed please do and i shall see you on friday until then i hope you have a fantastic week bye folks <laughs>